here and do a little presentation on budgets. So, <clears throat> hold on. Okay. SMB team PPC pilots, budgets and reverse pacing. Okay. So, um, as PPC experts, you know, we want to basically, we want to take off, we want to do a pre flight checklist, take off, and then reach a cruising altitude, make little tiny adjustments when we veer off course to ultimately reach our desired destination, Leedsville, USA. So basically, we want consistency in in like how we're showing up, a, a, a level flight plan, basically, like this, this guy up top. We don't really want like this up and down in, in budgeting our campaigns. So I have a question for you guys. These are two accounts. Um, which one do you think is pacing and which one do you think isn't pacing? A. Which one's pacing, A or B? A. Correct. Okay, so B, you can see, took off consistent, you know, there's always going to be like little fluctuations, right? And that's our job is to say, hey, what happened here? Let me make a little adjustment. But basically, we want this consistency, right? This this level flight plan. We don't want this, which is you're making adjustments the entire budget, and then you're going, oh, crap, I overspent. Let me drastically reduce the budget, which leads to these little dead areas here where ads just aren't shown at all okay um so some problems with pacing just went over them or went over some of them but basically overspending is a nightmare when you overspend um you know sometimes it's not by a crazy significant amount but if you overspend a lot or you just like really overspend trust is lost to a client you need to make that up you need to make up um you know you need to pay back that overspend somehow um, sometimes that's with services. Sometimes we actually have to give them money if we crazy overspend on an account. Um, another one is having to stop or greatly throttle traffic due to fluctuations in spend. So you're, you're spending, you realize you overspent, and then you have to either like pause an entire campaign or reduce that campaign's budget so much that your ad's really not showing up. Um, and then the last one is inconsistency in ad servings or in, in ads serving, we want that consistency. We want the level flight path. And then next week we're gonna talk about like a consumer's path in how they search. Um, so if a campaign, what? Yeah, that there are a couple other things um, like if it does overspend, but you keep the budget the same, Google won't charge you over budget. Like uh, I'm whatever. getting to that, yep, I'm getting to that. Um, oh. What's up? Sorry. No, you're good. Okay. So basically if, uh, if a campaign is like the airplane, right, then our budget is the fuel for that airplane. Okay. So filling up the tank, right. Setting a budget, um, whatever our client wants to spend, they want to send, uh, you know, $5,000 a month. I'm pretty sure we all know this, but it's that dollar amount divided by 30.4, which is the average number of days in a month equals what our daily budget should be set at. So here I brought in some things from Google's rule book. Um, to run your ads on Google, you need to decide on the right budget and bidding options. Your budget establishes a charging limit for an individual campaign. So it should be the average amount you'd be comfortable spending per day or seeing on your monthly credit card bill if you multiply your budget by 30.4, average number of days a month. Your actual costs may be lower depending on how you manage your bids. Over delivery. Because traffic fluctuates from day to day, Google may allow your campaign to spend up to two times more in one day than your <laughs> daily budget specifies. We call this over delivery. This is what Greta was just referring to. However, our system makes sure that in a given billing period, you're never charged more than 30.4 multiplied by your average daily budget amount. Excuse me. For example, if you, bu if you budget $10 per day, the maximum you pay is $304. If Google shows your ads too often and your cost for the month ends up exceeding what you should have paid in a month, 
given the average daily budget you set, an over delivery credit will automatically be applied to your account. For instance, if your if your monthly charging limit is three hundred and four dollars and you've accrued three hundred and ten dollars in costs, then you receive a six dollar credit and only be charged three hundred and four dollars. You can see these adjustments on your transaction history page. Important. Um, sorry, let me go back. Um, important thing that I wrote down here is depending on how you manage your bids. Okay. So let's go back up to this. Your cost, your actual cost may be lower depending on how you manage your bids. This is a really important part that I want you guys to get is that the bids and budget work in unison. So if you're, if you're constantly managing your bids, then you can still spend your entire campaign. We'll go through that. Okay. Important. Another important thing. In 2017, Google changed the amount it can exceed your daily budget. They've always said that they can exceed your daily budget. Okay. This is based on fluctuations in the marketplace. So if I'm targeting Philadelphia, there might not be more than 20 people looking for a personal injury lawyer in a day. There, on some days, there might be 90 people looking for a personal injury. So Google takes these things into account. They want to spend advertisers' budgets. Their goal is to make it so that so that people spend their monthly budgets, okay? Um, let's go through this. This is the actual announcement on October 4th, 2017. Campaigns will be able to spend up to twice the average daily budget to help you reach your advertising goals, like clicks, clicks and conversions. On days with, with lots of high-quality traffic, your cost can be up to two times the daily budget. This is balanced by days when your spend is below your daily budget. But keep in mind, you won't be charged more than your monthly charging limit, okay? Um, so, how do we maximize our budget and make sure that we're getting the most out of this? I call it reverse pacing, okay? So, this again, this, this little section here is from the Google rulebook, okay? So, they say, you know, what, what should you do on a campaign that's limited by budget? Lower your bids in campaigns that are limited by budget. While counterintuitive, slightly lowering your bids in campaigns that are marked limited by budget but could potentially help you earn more clicks. Lowering bids for budget constraint campaigns could reduce the average amount you pay when someone clicks your ads with the potential for your budget to go further and get more clicks. Lowering bids too much, however, could result in, in fewer clicks if bids are no longer competitive. If you choose to decrease your bids, your campaign, check your campaign a few days later and ensure that you have not lowered your bids too much, okay? So basically what that's saying, right, is lowering your bids in a campaign that's marked limited by budget will allow your keywords to serve more. And that makes sense with what they're saying, right? You can get more out of the budget by getting rid of some of the costs associated with each cost per click bid, okay? So that's why I always try to drive home. We wanna keep our bids tight to that top of page or first position bid estimate. Basically, if I have bids set to $200 across the board, and I have a $50 a day budget, it's not gonna work out, right? So we don't wanna really set our cost per click bid super high with a low budget. Our ads won't serve as much as they could, okay? So this is why when agencies pace, keywords with super high cost per click budgets or cost per click bids will start serving, but then when you bring that, that budget back down, they cut off, right? So basically, what can we do to you know keep keep these tight is keep our bids close to that top of page estimate, first position estimate, add in negative keywords. We don't want to like waste fuel on things that aren't helping us reach our goals. So we want to make sure we're adding in negative keywords. Um, and then we want to zero in on where our fuel is being used, right? We want to make sure that we're spending on the keywords that are getting the most traffic. And then that if there's keywords that aren't really getting activity, then we want to either pause those or break them out into their own campaign, right? So I said, let them take another flight. So if we have a, a bunch of keywords that aren't getting activity and then keywords that are eating up all of the, the campaign's budget, then we could break the lower performing keywords out into their own campaign. You guys all know the problems with that is splitting up the budget too much, right? Which is why I generally say, pause out those keywords and let's focus on what's getting the most activity. And in that same regard, we want to add in new keywords from 
really high impression searches that we're seeing. That way we know people are searching for it this way in the area. We want to add that in because that's how it's being searched for. Um, okay. So this is like the last thing um, is just how budgets are calculated. Okay. So when you change your budget, your spend for the rest of the month won't exceed your new average daily budget multiplied by the remaining days of the month. Okay. So they give a breakdown here when you change your budget. Okay. Wait, I already did that. For example, let's say you you have an average daily budget of $5 a day. And as of November 24th, you've spent $113. Okay. On that day, on the 24th, you change your average daily budget to $10. The maximum you'll be charged for the month of November will be $113, which is what you spent up until that budget change. Plus now this new calculation, $10 a day for the seven remaining days, which equals $183. But that was more than what the original average budget was. Does that make sense, that last part? To everybody? Yep. Okay. All right. And so what does this all mean? Google already has pacing mechanisms, make mechanisms built into Google Ads. These can serve up to 200% over the daily budget to make up for market fluctuations. While increasing budgets can make keywords that wouldn't serve get activity, due to the calculations of how budgets are set, pacing often leads to overspends and the need to throttle or decrease activity. So what we should do is reverse pace, keep keywords tight to competitive, tight but competitive, look for negatives. And uh, also the last point was we can make a budget change. We just should make one smart budget change. So Greta and I put in place rules for underspends or overspends mid month. And then we can actually like take these calculations into account and make a smart budget change, but we don't want to be continuously adjusting the budget or we lead to that uh, original slide, which is this one where we're going up and down and up and down and up and down. I would much rather let like keep a consistent path, right? With a budget that we set and underspend a little bit and let every other agency pace like this and let us get that competitive advantage when their ads have to stop serving because they've overspent. Um, questions? Amazing. Yeah, I thought that was a great presentation. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, and then next week I wanted to go through like- little of that, but that sounded very impressive. What happened? I understood very little of that, but that sounded really impressive. Okay, crap. <laughs> I was trying to make it understandable, but yeah, but, it's not it does, but like, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of concepts in there, but basically, it's like you know, if you change your budget, there's additional calculations that go into effect. Google's got pacing built in. We want to keep that consistent flight path and just make little adjustments, reverse pace. I think that budget pacing leads to much more problems than it does anything that's helpful to us. And then next week, I'm going to go through the path of a consumer and how they're looking at these ads, right? And that's going to also relate to pacing and how consistency is key, making sure that we're showing up as much as we possibly can with the budget that we're working with, not going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Cool? Uh, I, have, I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. So, um, you talked about um, how we pick keywords based on, you know, clicks how about say um if a keyword is getting a lot of clicks but we don't see any conversions is that a thing to worry about uh yeah so i mean look conversions is always the goal right that's the end goal um i think we have we always have had and actually just industry-wide there's always going to be conversion tracking problems i talked to chakor a little bit about this today right so that also relates to the path right so like um i've talked to a couple of you about this like yeah, I want to be able to track every single conversion that happens. I don't think it's ever going to be a real possibility, right? So um, we know, like, we want to always work towards that, right? But we got to, like, balance, uh, you know, what we can actually do beyond getting into the weeds on tracking with a client. Most clients, and this is, you know, 
there's going to be special circumstances for all of these because it's Google ads. We all know that, but most clients, uh, you know, we're the marketing company they're working with. Right. And they know that we're running paid, uh, paid ads for them. They're going to get leads other ways. Right. A lot of people might, might land on a landing page and not convert through the landing page. They might go back and convert through their GMB or something else. Obviously if we have that information. It's great. But if we don't like, my main focus is, is the traffic relevant. Okay. And, and then I want to see, okay, why, why isn't it converting? I want to like zoom in and look at all those things. Like, is there something wrong with the page? Is there something I could do to increase conversions is conversion tracking off in some way within Google ads. Um, but I don't want to like pause a keyword because it's not converting. Right. Because that leads to you like being like, Oh man, car accident lawyer is not converting. I better pause that, right? But then that leads to more problems. And that's on like the path thing that I was talking about, right? Is the way that a consumer searches on Google ads is unique. They're 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 likely clicking a paid ad three to six times before they make that conversion, right? There's always a conversion lag, right? And this is what a lot of people don't take into consideration is it's not always one click, one conversion. A lot of times it's a research process and them seeing you multiple times in their path ultimately leads, the, ultimately leads them to go, okay, I'm going to give this guy a call. I keep seeing him pop up in ads. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. so like, obviously the, the main point there, Dan, is if, if a, if a keyword's bringing in garbage, yes, then, then we might want to think about pausing it. But if it's bringing in quality, relevant traffic, I want to look at everything else before I even consider pausing it. Okay. Okay. 